some of our top tips on using and integrating a dappling into your skincare routine. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, OTC Adapalene, um, it typically comes in gel form. I think in prescriptions, you sometimes might find it as a cream as mm -hmm. well. It's simply, yeah, so usually it's just a suspension um, in a gel base. Mm -hmm. um, and what we will say is when you are shopping for Adapalene, it really doesn't matter too much which um, brand you're buying Adapalene from. Probably just recommend whatever you can get a discount on. Yeah, difference probably the most common mm -hmm. one. Um, I believe La Roche Posay <laughs> has one with Adapalene. So proactive, I think, has one. Yes, as well. yes. And the reason why it doesn't quite matter is because as an OTC ingredient, it's been studied a lot. There are some rules to formulating with these products, and ultimately, it's pretty stable. Mm -hmm. So most of these will will do the job. Yeah. Um, in terms of how you're applying it, um, in what order, um, we actually would still recommend applying that soothing serum before you apply Adapalene. Um, just you know, Adapalene, even though it's supposed to be uh, more gentle than tretinoin mm -hmm. um, it doesn't mean you're not going to get side effects yeah so, you're absolutely still going to get some shedding yeah. redness maybe stinging, depending on how your skin how your skin likes retinol exactly so we recommend that as a tip but ultimately it really doesn't matter too much um, what order you're applying dapoline you know if it comes first or after your serums no big deal um, but do apply it before any of those balms and moisturizers yeah yeah uh, one thing that we would like to absolutely recommend is the combination with benzoyl peroxide for all you acne users out there. Yeah, benzoyl peroxide is a great combination to use with your retinoids in general. Mm -hmm. There's a drama with tretinoin saying that it's not this combination isn't stable, though new age tretinoin formulations have addressed this issue. With Adapling, you can rest even easier that this is not going to be an issue in terms of active stability. In addition, this uh, combinations have been studied in conjunction. And they really just like bring the best out of each other. Yes. Synergistic effects. If you're wondering what that means, it means one plus one doesn't mean doesn't equal two. It means like a equals three and four and added benefits here. Mm -hmm. um, and they've actually found they're even looking at it as um, scar prevention for mm -hmm. acne as well. So we highly recommend um, if you are looking to build up your acne routine with this guy to consider trialing a BPO, benzoyl peroxide, and you don't need a lot of it. I think that's the biggest thing to remember about BPO is you do not need 10%. That is such a 90s thing yeah. that we've all had to endure with our bleached clothes and sheets and towels and we no longer need that, those kinds of concentrations. Look for a lower one to start. Mm -hmm. And we have to say this for every retinoid <laughs> episode yep. or just any skincare episode. <laughs> Please definitely use this with sunscreen. Yeah. Use sunscreen on the daily even when it's maybe cooler weathers so if you're going outside it's just always a good idea um that is a no-brainer anti-aging thing to do yeah. and also it helps prevent sun damage from your lovely new retin retin retinized <laughs> <laughs> your new skin that's undergoing retinization um yeah. it just helps protect that those new juicy cells and collagen totally all right um and i guess i should add i have used adapalene in the past um i've also used tretinoin as well i will say i still had a little bit of a skin acclimation period when mm -hmm. i started adapalene with dryness and flaking i didn't actually deal with redness but i don't get red too often actually and i will say that you know probably um which one would i prefer hmm. you know i in terms of acne i think i've seen success with both mm -hmm. um I find that 0.1% adapalene is really great for managing acne. Mm -hmm. I would say like if I were dealing with severe breakouts, I probably um, would actually head to the derm and get the hard stuff. <laughs> but, <laughs> but in terms of general acne maintenance and breakout maintenance, I think 0.1 is great. Yeah, I have a hard time with retinoids yeah. and I, I'm pretty dry, so I'm not very acne prone. So I've never felt the need to use adapalene. Yeah. If I'm using a retinoid, if I'm suffering through the first two weeks to a month of acclimation yeah. then i'm using retinol because i'm there for anti-aging benefits totally. um but i will say doing the research for this episode i'm like did someone say blackhead data <laughs> even though i have dry skin sometimes my nose area yeah. gets that really gnarly really difficult to get rid of blackhead just complete pasture of strawberry seeds yeah so, <laughs> so for me so visual <laughs> so for me Post-pregnancy, I would definitely want to, I would definitely try out Adapling yeah. and I will report back with findings on this podcast on 
how irritation was for me. Yeah, that's that what I was going to say. Yeah. I was like, the irritation factor would be curious to know. Yeah, because I have, I've definitely had really terrible experiences with ret- uh, yeah. retinol. <clears throat> this is a bit of a side note, but I've definitely used retinol and gotten a little too brave. Where during the acclimation period, I feel like using it every other day. Mm. I'm like, oh, I think that's fine. And I use like, and I'll use it on back to back nights. And the next day, I'm like, it burns, water yeah. burns, my cleanser burns, yeah. everything burns. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll report back with findings there. Totally. 